It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Ah! Hey! hey. Boom! This is Wretched Radio bringing you the latest in celebrity entertainment informational news. From a Christian perspective, why not? Take a breath and try some more. Other radio programs give that a run. These aren't just any celebrity news stories. No siree, Bob. We're bringing you Christian celebrity news. There is an entertainment segment of evangelicalism. It has been, well, flourishing, for better or for worse, for decades now. It has grown to be very substantial, whether it's Christian music, whether it's Christian TV, this thing right here, Christian radio. There is a big evangelical Christian entertainment segment. And so there's sometimes a lot of news. The question is, should we always be commenting on that news? I say the answer is, it depends on what your objective is. If your desire is to build up, if it is to edify, if it is to grow, if it is to teach, if it is to warn, sure. But if it's to simply participate in celebrity gossip, nah, that doesn't help anything or anyone. Don't we see that when we check out at the grocery store, the news racks? I, I, what was the store? I was just at the grocery store and saw the headline for the, the big store. Oh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. They're, they, they were, they're in the news. Apparently, they're having their sixth baby. Apparently, we could learn if we bought the magazine or just page through it at the grocery store. The three things that Chip said that saved their marriage or the three promises he made or something like that. And people love that. And we're not excluded. And if we're not careful, we'll fall into that same trap, man, and we'll participate in celebrity gossip even if it's in the evangelical world, that doesn't always make it sanctified. There is no sanctified gossip, is there? It's just gossip. <laughs> so let's see if we can tackle some stories in evangelical celebrity land without sinning. <clears throat> hey, did you see the story about the famous guy who had to confess that he hasn't been behaving like a Christian and there's a lot of people upset with him? Yeah, that one. Here's my commentary. Very I got insightful. I, I got, Concise, I got, nothing, I got insightful. nothing for you. I've got nothing for you. Most likely you know about this celebrity in evangelical Christianity who has had to confess that he has been behaving very poorly. Am I disclosing the details? Well, I could because this is probably a story that meets the bar of discernment that you should be able to jump over that says, I'm not propagating gossip. I'm trying to talk about it for the sake of helping. That's a rule of discernment we so often forget, isn't it? Are you actually talking about something with an eye on trying to help? Or are you actually just fanning the flames? Oh, I didn't know about that. Tell me about that. I, this story is probably widespread enough that we wouldn't be fanning the flames. Nevertheless, I'm going to try to stay on the right side of the line. But the other high hurdle that we have to jump over is, can we say something? Can I say something that is beneficial, that is helpful? And the answer in this particular scandal is, I, I got nothing for you. I, I, there's, 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 I, I just I can't think of anything to say that would shed some light on this story that would be edifying or beneficial. So let's move on to our next story, shall we? <laughs> All right, there's, there's one observation I would make about this particular story of a fellow who's famous in evangelical Christianity. Apparently, he's been, he was behaving poorly. I will say this, if you read his confession... Why Why wouldn't we just accept it and say, all righty, now what's going to happen in his life from henceforth? I don't know, but let's find, uh, we'll find that out as time progresses. Hopefully, he goes underneath the authority of a sound local church, d deals with these issues, deals with appropriate repentance. And what he does for a living after that, it, that's uh, that's none of my speculation or the way I what, how do I know what's going to happen to the fellow? I don't know. You just pray the best for him because you don't want to see anybody 
dealing with these issues so publicly and you just hope that the right thing happens and that it's dealt with on the local level, not on the national evangelical gossip level. So that that's that's all I got for you. Story number two. Don't know if you read this. Francis Chan preaching at, I believe he was at Azusa Pacific University. He's decided to become a missionary in Myanmar. He's, he's moving to Asia and he is going to become a missionary there. I got nothing for you. I got I got nothing. I got nothing. I know people are commenting on it. I know that people are making speculations. Some people are making snide remarks. I got nothing. So I, I, I'm not going to say anything about it because it doesn't require or demand a comment from all of us all the time. If we cannot contribute in some sort of way that is helpful or that is enlightening, it doesn't need to be said. And, and let's just say, for instance, there's an evangelical celebrity who has done something, good, bad, or otherwise, and everybody's saying something about it, a specific thing. I don't need to add to that. I, I don't need to just say it for the sake of saying it. I don't, I don't even need to contribute in that way. I think gossip is an overlooked sin that I think we're probably a little bit too casual about in evangelical Christianity. And James, throughout his book, every chapter of James deals with the tongue. This little rascal that makes a mess. It can set a forest on fire with a word. And we need to be careful and fall on the right side of the line so that we don't start a fire. And I just fear that all too often in evangelical celebrity circles, the, 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 the gossips that, that happen out there in the, the, with the Twitter sphere, with the stories and the postings and the blogs, it's not helpful. Look, this whole evangelical celebrity thing, it's fraught with danger from the get-go. It has pros. It definitely has cons. And, and I, I wonder if some of these cons could be eliminated if we maybe didn't use some of these stories for fodder and set these people up as speed bags. Story number three. Former pastor Joshua Harris says he's excommunicated himself after announcing faith. You know this story. This is the, the, the young man who wrote I Kiss Dating Goodbye, was in, at the age of, I think, 19, maybe 20, was elevated to prominence in the, the evangelical celebrity world. He was made a pastor, lickety split. He didn't have any formal training. And then as the years went by, we suddenly started to see signs, uh-oh, what's what's going on in Josh's world? And then not too far long after that, he announced, my wife and I are divorcing, we're uncoupling, whatever the terminology is. Oh, and by the way, I'm no longer a Christian. Uh, that was a bomb, wasn't it? Another evangelical celebrity bites the dust. That's one of the perils of evangelical celebrityism. Now, I'm not saying throw out the baby with the bathwater, but we need to be aware uh, the, the, that's 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 some of the danger of having people and ministries that have big reaches and impacts. When one of those guys takes a tumble, gulp, it causes a lot of confusion. So now, doing an interview, he states that he has excommunicated himself. Um, if I could, because I, I think this is a worthwhile comment. You can't do that. <laughs> and I see that trend so often in evangelical Christianity. Maybe somebody isn't a member of a church. I think that's a problem. You can't be excommunicated if you're not a member. You just leave. You're caught in sin. Your soul's in danger. People want to try to rescue you, but they can't because the mechanism that is provided for us in Matthew 18 doesn't exist, so they can't use that to save the person from him or herself. That is a shame, but also in evangelical Christianity, excommunication is so rarely employed. Look, we don't want to have to be doing it every week. It would, that would be, that was, something's probably wrong on the other end of the spectrum, but there's so little excommunication. 
and now he's excommunicating himself? You can't do that, Josh. And whoever his church was should be the ones who actually do that. I would simply ask, is your church high on church discipline? The reformers would say a church that never disciplines is not a church. It would be one of the legs of the stool that holds up an evangelical church. No discipline, no church. One last non-comment about Josh. He said things in this interview that are causing people to speculate about his sexuality. Here's my comment on that. Josh has much bigger problems than his sexuality. His soul is dangling over a precipice that is awfully hot and awfully eternal. That should be my concern far more than his sexual proclivity. We hope you enjoyed entertainment news here on Wretched Radio.